Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Saturday, which means it's time for a new FL Basics tutorial. This one is going to be about MIDI in FL. Now, I'm going to do something. I have a whole bunch of stuff open, as you might be able to see, and I want to point out some interesting things about them being open. So note that I have the uh, kick thingy here selected and the, the MIDI and the the sequencer thingy, right? So when I have when I have uh, the taping typing piano to, blah, 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 typing keyboard to piano keyboard option up here, which means that whenever I hit a keyboard key, it's interpreted as a note, and that means it's selecting that one. Now watch what happens when I hit um, one of my launch pads I have here. It's playing the strings, but I still have that selected. And then if I hit the other launch pad. Well, it's playing the harmer that's in this patcher. That's not even in the sequencer. It's in the, it's in an effects send, an effects insert. And many even longtime users of FL are probably wondering what the hell is happening right now because what I, I have set up here is I'm able to independently control specific instruments and things using specific MIDI input. So to explain all of this, we, we have to explain how MIDI input works in FL. So to begin this, we're going to go to the options window. I'm going to MIDI settings and get this. Now, in, in the, the primary options window, you can actually get all the other options types from just any window. All these types are all actually available in the uh, window here. MIDI is just the first one. So when you in, when you put in, an, actually new to FL11, uh, which was introduced to one of the betas for FL11, was the ability for... FL to automatically recognize when a new uh, device is being plugged in and automatically enable it if you have it uh, enabled, selected from a previous time it was enabled. This is new because usually you'd have to actually rescan for many devices every single time you had a new one, or if like you unplugged one by accident and plugged it back in, it wouldn't know that you plugged it back in. But now it does. That's very cool. Um, so yeah, anyway, we have here, we have the input and output options for, ver for the various uh, MIDI uh, controllers and inputs. Project MIDI is actually the main MIDI input on my uh, audio interface. And so if I were to plug something into the MIDI input into that thing, that's how it would, it would run it through. In here, though, uh, we have options to set the input output ports over here. Now, uh, what's important for what we're doing right now is the input ports, because these over here. So I set uh, the one that's controlling the strings to number two, and the one that's controlling the harmer to number three. So, um, in third-party plugins, when we do uh, third-party plugins, it actually it's inputted into the uh, the VST wrapper window. What is this thing? It says Fruity Wrapper, and it names it Play, because Play is the name of the uh, East-West plugin thingy. And um, over here we have an options menu for wrapper settings. Over here, the very like in the main very main window, we have settings for uh, just various things. And here we have MIDI, we have input and output port. So if the thing does MIDI and it can output, like, uh, for example, there's a plugin called Drum Drumagog, which uh, is a audio to MIDI uh, processor. So when I hear, like, it's, mo I use it for uh, replacing, like, kick drums for, for a sample. And I do that by uh, having it select a MIDI output. And then what it will do is it will, when you hear an audio input of a particular threshold, it'll trigger a, a MIDI event. And then I set the output port to something, like, you know, one or two or three, or any number at all, and then I set, I'll set an instance of Superior Drummer to be um, the corresponding input, and then it will accept the MIDI from that thing as it creates MIDI. Most often, though, uh, things that, like, you know, your synths or whatever are just going to accept MIDI. Like, they don't really make, you know, create MIDI themselves. So, input port is what's up with that. So, uh, as I have the input port for that one, that one launch pad to be input port 2, I set input port 2 on the... Um, on the east-west thingy, and now it'll accepts MIDI from that, and only that. Um, if I if I selected it and I hit the keyboard, it'd do that too because that's just what it's selecting. That's what it's doing. But if I select something else and I hit the and I hit the uh, launch pad, it's not going to trigger anything else. It's only going to trigger the thing that it's linked to via the ports. Now. Uh, how did I get that to work for a harmer? Because these this wrapper thing is only only a thing for third party plugins. So you, uh, I open up a patcher, and in the patcher we have this we have the yellow 
uh, events, which are audio events, and then we have the green uh, events, which are note events. And by default, we just have notes, which are just like if you were to select it and play it, that's what it would interpret as being the primary input. However, I loaded the patcher into an effects insert, which means that there's not going to be any connected direct notes to it. So if you right-click it, we have outputs. And then we have audio and events, and then events is MIDI. And so over here we have all the MIDI ports, just like we did in the wrapper. So over here I set MIDI port 3 to be um, the second launch pad that I have over here. So now let's say uh, I wanted to do this, have this sort of control over it, like if I wanted to have like another another uh, synth in here, like a uh, citrus. And by default, it automatically selects, like, selects it to there. And then say I wanted to have another uh, event input, so like maybe port five. And notice that when I select these, I right click these if I want to select more than one. If I, but if I, if I were to click it with left click it, it would select it and then close. That's true for most most menus inside Patcher. So now I have this new dot, MIDI port five, but I don't have any more MIDI controllers and I want to control that. How do I do that? Well, this comes in, this is when the uh, MIDI out plugin in the uh, generators tab comes into play. So this thing is basically, it's all about synthetic MIDI. It's, it's basically emulating a MIDI signals and stuff like that internally so that um, you can control stuff with things. Now this actually works for uh, even the, the third party wrapper stuff. So like if I set this to port two, It's controlling the strings, and that's cool. And it's actually actually really neat for um, play in particular, and also contact. Contact has this sort of ability: is that the overall overall MIDI input port can be import port two. But if I were to have another instrument, like if I wanted to load up something, just something, right? Now it has a new MIDI channel. So if I set this one to channel one, which is by default normal channel, and then I set this one to channel two. It's actually not going to be played. It's not going to be played by the uh, the controller. But if I in the MIDI in the MIDI port thingy, if I set this to channel two, I am now individually controlling that new instrument, despite being the same port. So if you have a controller like a keyboard controller that has that you can like set MIDI channels for and like control between them, then this is but this will have the same effect. And so. We can mimic this with the mini out, and that's what it's doing. So then over here, I guess I have this to port uh, four, port um, five, I guess. And now I'm controlling Citrus. Now, interestingly enough, some of these actually have specific um, options for different mini channels. Uh, they're not displayed here, but if I were to add one, go to piano roll, and then we go to the colors. Uh, these colors represent different mini channels. Right, and then over here, over here though, uh, on 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, they're, they're actually listed as having different uh, properties for this synth, which is Harmer. We have Arp Priority, Bypass Strum, Inverted Legato, Inverted Porta, Filter Frequency. So those MIDI channels can be can control those parameters, which is kind of cool. That's the other way that you can control uh, MIDI, by the way. So, like, if um, if I have this wrapper and I have this guy, let's say, because if I wanted to do channel one and channel two, I can't automate in between these. So I'd have to actually make another MIDI out. So MIDI out one, this first one is channel one, this was channel two, and now this one is just legato strings, and then this one is staccato strings. So then that, those are just the new instruments. It's actually Mercado or whatever, but that's, you know, you know what I mean. And that's that's all well and good. But if I wanted to actually, I could actually control um, the MIDI channel changes by using these colors. So, you know, we have channel one and channel two because the first one is just ports. And then, you know, it's channel one by, by you know, setting, but that's all well and good. And of course, you have Omni. Uh, Omni settings be meaning any any channel input is going to change is going to is going to trigger whatever one you want to set. That's what this means for this plugin in particular. So yeah, I think okay. What did I wanted to cover? I had patcher patch reports and MIDI imports, and the big one was is how to how to have uh, specific MIDI hardware trigger specific plugins because I actually didn't know this for the longest time, 
and I wanted to do something like I wanted I wanted to set up my drum kit to to trigger Superior Drummer, but then it would also trigger everything else, like whatever I had selected. If I and if and then if I selected something like if I had that going on, and then I had my keyboard, um, my, the way that my keyboard, which is not in here, is, is set up is that the, the little the the buttons on the first row are set to be program change buttons, and the and FL by default interprets program change as, as cycling through selecting these like these lights here. So this is program change one, two, three, four, and five, and whatever. And then if I were the if I if I move this around, it would mean that the drums are no longer focused on superior drummer, and then they'd start triggering synth and stuff, and that's just obnoxious. And so like the way that I would I would deal with that is I would have a layer with all the instruments I'm ever going to play, and then I would have zone configuration so that like only the lowest notes like the like you know E zero are going to be like you know the drum the drum MIDI notes, and I have to set all those to work out. And then all that kind of stuff. But this one, the way that this works now is that if I um, if I actually plugged in, actually I'll turn it on. Should show up in a second, or it's not plugged in, is it? Oh, it's actually pl it's in Project Mini. So like um, it's plug it, This is actually plugged in directly into the back of my uh, audio interface. So if I made this um. Yeah, I'll put port four. And then I made a superior drummer. Go into here, settings, input port four. And now it would trigger a superior drummer and only superior drummer, which is seriously important. Anyway, that's what's up with that. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And remember, today is Saturday, which means that, that um, I'll be streaming at uh, 6 p.m. EST, 6 p.m. EST, minus 5 GMT. And I'll be doing it for about an hour and a half. That's what I usually do. And yeah, that's today. Have a nice day. And that's pretty much it. I think I covered everything. This is more. This is more than I knew when I was trying to get my MIDI stuff to work. You know, three or four years ago, and also it just works better now. So that's good. And Patcher is awesome. So yeah, later.